February the 9th, 2016. The National Portrait Gallery in London. People are gathered for one of the biggest fashion parties of the year. British Vogue is celebrating its 100th birthday. I was invited to film inside the fashion Bible for the first time ever by the magazine's editor-in-chief, Alexandra Shulman. She is one of the most powerful women in the fashion industry. I knew Vogue would be a passport into the rarefied world of top designers and impossible glamour. So I decided to keep a diary. I'm glad I did. Because Vogue is a world where things are not quite what they seem. A place where appearances can be deceptive. There's both, both counts, please. You know where it is, just keep going round. Yeah. 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 September 2015. Bought Vogue for the first time ever yesterday. It's quite intimidating, the thought of entering the offices of the Fashion Bible. Morning, sir. Hi, welcome to uh, Joe's Vogue. No, it's on the fifth floor. Fifth floor. I was hoping to meet the editor-in-chief and get introduced to her team, but she's away in New York. Her office is massive. And then we do feel like, and then maybe like a navy one, and then they say we have two classic suits yeah. in his size from yeah. Hanselman, and then we have all yeah. the other more hipstery kind of thing. Yeah. Do you think it's a bit oh. too checked, or do you love it? I love it, but I don't know for him. Well, we know he likes Armani. Let's have a look at the arm. Where's the Armani? He's bringing his own Armani. He's bringing his own yeah. Armani. He's bringing his own Armani, and we covered everything. Mm -hmm. I've been at Vogue since 2003. It's a really key to me, this corner. I think it's sort of the hub, really, of, of, of Alex's everyday life. You know, she sits there, you're privy to lots of confidential information, and you have to be really on the ball. We are her gatekeepers team and yeah we're her eyes and ears at all times we're quite often asked how the mood is that day yeah how's the weather today <laughs> Just to try and make it a little bit easier rather than throwing them in, into stormy weather <laughs> Thank you.
lovely. Oh, thank you. It's great to you. Amazing. Thank you. I'm doing well. Yeah, got here yesterday. Right. Late. Right. Late. Your show. I know. And, exactly. um, I know, but I've seen all of it on, online. Yeah. From my research, it looks amazing. Really, yeah, really yeah, lovely. You must have been really thrilled. Well. Yeah. How's the family? Well, very well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Lovely. All good. So this is the the opening story of the um, of the collection. This is a bounce gingham, nice. which is a really nice fabric. Which is nice and light for summer. Really easy to wear. Has a nice amount of stretch. There's your prints. Yes, yeah, someone said yesterday that she just had a bit of a war hole for you right. about it, which was cool. So, I mean, playing with different proportions, I think there's definitely um, a more relaxed thing about this collection. Mm -hmm. And then we had some really nice knit pieces as well. So I've got my card thing put into the shoe box, yours. You've got it? <clears throat> You've been here, Lucinda, for 36 years. Oh, God, thank you. Is it a precious world, fashion? Do people take offence easily? Well, I think it's a funny old world because, unlike if you're a musician or an actor or a film director, where you have a body of work. You have that body of work and you, you are as good as that body of work. You've got a kind of a longevity. In fashion, it's very, it's very quick. It's very quick to decide if you're in, if you're out. It's very, it can be over very quickly, and then it's almost as if you can't connect it. Because it's very instantaneous. It's relentless. You're making things redundant, in a way, all the time. You're making things relevant all the time. But in a very superficial way. September 17th. The office here is a very polite and guarded world. Over the next few months, I'm hoping to get under the skin of the place, find out what the rules are. But I'm going to have to wait until the end of the fashion shows in a few weeks' time. Then they'll start preparing the issues for March, April and May. It must be strange being a man working at Vogue. There are a handful of them here. As a kind of inversion of the wider society, men here seem to be the underlings, and the women dominant. Whenever I pass one of them in the corridor, they share a look, which is quite hard to explain, but is best described as, well, a look. British Vogue has a reputation for being about arts and culture, as well as fashion. Alex employs an editor at large, who writes stories about the latest movies, novels and plays. She's on first name terms with many Hollywood agencies. Are we going now? Yeah, yeah. Have I'm I just going to get Fiona to smell my mascara as the test for the thing. Because this is the one I bought in Versailles on that shoot. Because I left my mascara on the plane, it smells like lilac. Oh, it does. It's nice, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. See, but it's nice. It's like soft mascara. Usually, I always buy my mascara from Boots. Yeah. But now I'm hooked on. It's too expensive. I like yeah. it. It's like kind of dusty smell of my grandmother. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right, looks good. We just have to decide whether we have him on a sofa and a feet up with a burger, yeah. fries. The aim is basically we're and doing a yeah. portfolio of 12 or 13 Hollywood. Kind of what's been going on in London, who's been shooting in London over one summer, 
what Hollywood movies, but the, the shot we want to get is the idea of Hugh and it's kind of after the work's over. We want to have him with his feet up, you know, and a bit of a, a beer and a burger. Just kind of like Hugh, the day's over. And they really want sort of kicking back. Kicking back. Yeah. Ideally without his trousers on, but I don't think it's going to happen. <laughs> So Mary's got four children, right? So the average shoot involves a phone in her yeah. ear organizing some kind of PTA experience of little yeah. her children. It's good. She keeps me definitely occupied all the time. Do you find that when you're doing when you when you're when you're photographing celebrities, people are very interested to ask you about your father? You know what? Never really, unless no. they've met him, they don't. But oh, what John I, Goodman had a wobble. He he he, he meant. To, but usually, what I find is, if they if they've met my dad, then they'll say say hello or have an anecdote. But um, I do find that maybe my background ha has, because I've been a photographer for over twenty years now. I've realised it allows people to trust me quicker. I think. It's never taught me a job, I don't think, ever, but, but it did. gets you, yeah. That's well, I gave it to you, yeah. <laughs> she never takes me home. You haven't actually even met that. No, either. I haven't met. Long is beautiful to you. When you're long, it's... That nice one. It's nice. Can you see how handsome you are here? You know how handsome you are. <laughs> okay, pop in the bar. Do you know I went to the Lee Miller exhibition at the um, National Portrait Gallery and there was a picture of a woman leaning out the window. So she must have learned that window to photograph somebody typing on a window ledge outside the exit window. And I remember thinking when you do these portraits of birds, always try and do something that's maybe got a little you know, just something. When you come to your shoot here, and you show to him, and you show to Alex, do you feel like nervous about it, or do you feel safe? Yeah. It's it's really so like school, it's ridiculous. You do your work, you hand it in, and then you wait for your marks. In Alex's case, it comes in all different forms. So a tick is good, a nice is great, you're handing in written work. A fantastic is you save it, you show a friend. You know, it depends. Terrific is something worth holding into. She doesn't like something. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. September the 20th. Alex has invited me to film with her at the fashion shows in London, Milan, and Paris. What a glamorous way of arriving. I know. Where are the limos? But so has Lucinda. So I'm splitting my time between the two of them. Alex absolutely hates setting things in stone too early. You know, she likes to be able to, you know, take a breath after the show. But I understand that. But I'm. A more tigger like, and she's perhaps a little bit more eel. So, what I tend to do is, I think it drives Alex mad actually, because almost, I don't go to the New York shows, but almost when I'm sort of scrolling sh through the shows, I'm already sort of like identifying stories. Um, you know, like I thought New York was very sort of, you know, there was a kind of Lego element to it, that it was very sort of. But I said to Alex in the email, it's a very primate, primal, sort of um, primary colours, red, yellow, blue, white. And then I always call the story something, because say I've called this primate, I put PM or 
you know, I'd quite like to do a road trip with Mario, so I put road trip. I just put the initials. And then when I go through my books, everything kind of relates to the stories. And, and because what would be the damage to say you know, when, when, you, when you suggested your Lego? Nothing. Was she a bit like... Oh. Nothing. She didn't respond. She didn't respond? <laughs> I know. She had more, more important things to think about at that time. And I was getting ahead of myself. Have you got a pass? Well, how are you going to get through here? Okay. Would you say it's a, an emotional experience for you doing yes. the shows? Yes. In what way? Because it just takes your heart somewhere else. It takes your imagination elsewhere, out of yourself, to somewhere else. It's really, really exciting. I mean, it just still is. And even after so long, when you come out of a good show, um, it's just incredibly uplifting. And it sets your mind thinking about possibilities, of shoots, of clothes, of the way things are worn. It just is exhilarating. It's like seeing a wonderful film or a dancer or a play or an exhibition. It's, it's, it's sort of meat and drink to what we do, really. For a world capable of creating such sublime beauty, I cannot get over how chaotic the fashion shows are. In New York, London and Milan, they've been very nearly late for each show because they cause huge traffic jams. It was okay today because I was with Alex in her car. She just made a quick call and they held the start of the show until we were there. Sometimes you'll see up to 10 shows in a day. By the end of the season, she'd have sat in front of over 150 catwalks. People seem to run off adrenaline or coffee. At lunchtime, Lucinda grabbed a hot dog. She offered me a chip, but she was walking so fast I had to run to keep up. So I didn't get one. I think that is the customer. Some girl come out with the shopping bag. Like a shop. Where? You know, because it's the English, the American, Japanese, Chinese, from Africa. Yeah. It's our customer, Russian. When you come to Bali, you understand? Come, watch the, the stage. Okay. It's an Italian street. And look. Oh, so she's going to come out shopping. Yeah. And during the show, we have an application, and the girl is shot selfie, and it goes straight into the web. Yeah. You love your, you love your web. Everyone told me the Chanel show was the best. The huge set was designed like an airport with luggage trolleys and departure boards. For a joke, I asked one of the check-in girls where I could fly to. And she said, where would you like to fly to? Social media is everywhere. From what I can gather, this is the thing that's really changing about fashion. Everyone's filming the shows on their phones. Everyone apart from Lucinda. I know for a fact that Anna Winter uses Snapchat. I think Carl Lagerfeld might be on Twitter. (laughs) 
17th of October. In the 25 years Alex has been in charge, British Vogue has enjoyed a winning formula with monthly sales often topping 200,000. But Alex has returned from Paris, inspired to shake things up a bit. Right. She wants to change the magazine's covers. It's quite a risky move because it's breaking with years of tradition. It's a kind of reaction to the social media that's going on and a feeling that people are so used to, to having access to everybody's lives who's you know, on Instagram, you know, showing them themselves in bed or what they have for breakfast or on holiday or whatever. And, you know, question, I don't have the answer. Um, do perhaps people like the idea of a magazine cover reflecting that? more intimate knowledge or other question do they actually want covers to remain distant and something that's other than that i guess my job and what's really interesting is how do you keep that element of you know the iconic model fashion model idea of Vogue, but also make it part of the very kind of um, democratic kind of conversation that's going on at the moment. I mean, I think that's probably the biggest task that I've, I've got. Alex has decided she wants one of the most in-demand models at the moment, Edie Campbell, to be the face of the March issue. She wants the modelling legend, Kate Moss, on April, and the pop star, Rihanna, on the May cover. Edie has agreed to let me film her shoot, but getting Kate and Rihanna to say yes is, well, a long shot. I saw somebody's Instagram, who I won't mention, mm -hmm. and I never look at Instagram. I just Skype for the first time, I was like, so they said, mm -hmm. really, you don't have to shout like a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> I like to shout as if it was a chicken cat. I was, I was. I was like, woo, can you see me, can you see me? He's like, don't just keep shouting, keep shouting. And then I'd go like, so, can you hear me? Yeah, I can. <laughs> so anyway, I saw an Instagram. I think yeah. it was the first Instagram I've ever seen. And I really loved it. It was just very free. It didn't feel like a fashion. No, it was, yeah. it wasn't a fashion story. So obviously, because it's the March, it has to be for the fashion. Mm -hmm. So this is basically you. It's a bit of a sort of romantic rebel, because I think I can imagine you going to a sort of Mario party and something like that. That was my sister. My sister. Yeah. Were they Gucci? Yeah. The only thing I'm concerned yeah, about camera. is whether that's going to look... What are you do? I just can't tell without seeing it on what it looks like on her. Which I'm a bit worried Are about. And will that look like an old lady's knickers kind of thing? Well, let's leave that to one side and let's... But, I, but on the other hand, it could it look really look wonderful with the sparkle yeah. and... The, I mean, in a way, Alex, what I feel about this shoot... I know, if you want to see... Well, is I want to be a bit free yeah. of it. Yeah, well, there, these are all possible. Do you know what I mean? Options, in sounds fabulous. World. I know. I mean, I, I mean, I rather agree with you. I think that's probably the best of them, too. I do. I think that's a bit of a key. Yeah. Oh, that... This is the... So every season we do two walls. One wall will be... You know, the more classic girls that we shoot more regularly. And then every season I like to do a wall of the new faces, the girls who've just come out of the shows, who the editors, you know, might have seen or might not have seen, um, depending on which shows they were at. And what is this wall? This wall is the new faces for the season, but this is actually last season's, so we're going to be changing it imminently. So that wall's the kind of one of these, and that's the sort of, <laughs> that's the sort of made it, is that right? I wouldn't say one of these, I'd say new faces and uh, classics. Oh, I right, don't okay, <laughs> You know, lots of people think standing around in front of a camera all day is really easy, but it takes 
a lot just to get onto that wall will take a hell of a lot of hard work. It's not just good genes. Kate's been up there. Kate will be up there forever. And the rest can stay. Spare for another day. <laughs> <laughs> they live to fight another day. No one's going to do lovely, nice new pictures on them and then bring in a load of the newer faces. I, I think the, the, what I love about this story is that none of the clothes go with anything. They're just a random, beautiful selection of stuff. But what I love, Mary, is the idea, like your picture with this cat is my favourite picture of all time. It's yeah. so sad that I didn't do it. Um, but I love the sort of intimacy and the coolness and that she could be anywhere and you have such a, a range and I think that's what I really want to see in this shoot is that is your is to is to see your range. I only have one year to uh, a beautiful um, doily. What do you think? Her off her on? Yeah, but then off. Off, Evie, let's have a look. Open your elbows out where you can see it. Well, see? The black. Okay, straight up. You seem like you're looking at the screen? Yeah, I'm looking at it. That's the light. I don't know what it is. I love it. Just before. Just before there. Yeah. It seemed ironic to me, after months of negotiation to film with the most famous photographer in the world, he is shooting in a dingy passageway, no bigger than a cupboard. They look good, don't they? That last one. Lucinda and Mario have worked together for years. Stay there. He's the godfather to one of her three sons. We both lived in squats when we were young. Mario had his squat and I had my squat. And Mario's squat was like a old hospital and he gave like the best parties, doctors and nurses parties. Very good, Evie Campbell. Well done. How I met Mario is a really funny story. It's really funny. It's really I was amazing. in a bus uh, on Regent Street and I see this girl who like freaky walking on the streets. So I thought I had to, I had to get off the bus to meet this girl. So I talked to her and like a week later I get um, a call from a hairdresser salon if I would document a haircut that they'd done on this girl. And it was her, the girl. And that was the beginning of our relation. My first photograph with the yeah. bow was a photograph like of a scene that it was a postage stamp shot. I mean but I thought I was in Vogue, even though my name was as big as the, as the photograph. But it's a wonderful thing, because Mary used to come to the office, because in those days we, would, we, we got given lunch in vouchers. And I had no money, so and I, I had, had to eat no I used to give him her her my lunch in vouchers. And Hi, how are you? What are you doing? And all the fashion editors, I would be like... one o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> and that would be Mary, and I'd be with her my lunch in vouchers. And we share, share the them every day, yeah. those sons of vouchers fed me and <laughs> kept me going. <laughs> and me. There's a trend driven 
you know, industry and it moves very fast. I think people are really hungry for something new. You know, they want to latch on to the next fad or the next big thing. And I think there's a lot of pressure. And you know what? Sometimes there is nothing new. You know, it's, I think probably most of the time there's nothing new. So trying to make something feel like it's new all the time, it's kind of exhausting. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, when something is really kind of new and exciting, people get sort of crazy about it. But yeah, it's a lot of pressure and it's a, it's a lot. Hi. This is so. Yeah. So that's the monster. There's the Burberry cover. Yeah. And then there's this one. I quite like the white logo. If I'm honest. Me too. It's really hard, isn't it? Because I think this picture, I think maybe looks more approachable and more like somebody I want to know than she does in that picture that you know if you're going to just say new stand impact that primary colour white, red and black is going to read better I'm trying to think if there's anything we can do to kind of punch this up a bit Our conversation this morning we were talking about how we keep you know, in the past, we've done so many default studio. Yeah, and we want to make studio. it feel more intimate. And like maybe that's the more appealing you really in want way. To know. Yeah. So my emotional preference is for for this one. My commercial preference brings that one into play. So like whether you should be ruled by your heart or your mind. Yeah. My heart is never allowed to rule. <laughs> well, I, I'll see what I can do to make this one come to it. I love, I mean, I do one. love this one because I think Edie looks exactly what I want her to. She looks like the most attractive yeah. girl that you really want to be her friend and you really want to know her. And I think she looks so, yeah, attractive. Alex is quite difficult to read at times. I can't be certain whether she's happy for me to film something or whether she's not. For example, she wasn't keen for me to know about some market research on the two ED cover options. And I found the results lying on someone's desk. And she wasn't keen on me filming with her mother. And today has finally relented. Both her parents were successful journalists. Her mother, Drusilla, used to work for Vogue, and she lives in Belgravia. Welcome. Hello. Hello. In the 50s, and before I got married, I went to stay in New York for a bit, and I, did, I was a freelance there. I did a number of stories, and one of my stories uh, was involved in what it was like to be dated by American men. And Eve Arnold, who was a very distinguished American photographer, was commissioned to uh, take some appropriate photographs of me. And here I am at the top of the Empire State Building, looking, I must say, rather splendid. How did you find dating in American men? Well, I married a Canadian, so it couldn't have been totally disastrous, could it? He was thrilled when Alexander was born, which was his first one. And one reason was he was convinced that she looked exactly like him. He was very, very proud of her. One of the real sadnesses is that he never kind of saw the real flowering of her in her present world. He, he got an indication 
he knew, you know, he was, he, was, he was up to that, but I think he'd love to see her now. And I think he'd be rather surprised. <laughs> I think Paul was really going to be surprised when they were going to be extremely well. Here's Alexandra. Here's Alexandra, age three. I think she looks quite imperious there. You know, she's so successful. What are the key qualities that she has that make that, that, that made her successful, do you think? I think she has a very unusual quality of being able to compartmentalize what she does. She somehow seems able to um, take a problem and kind of wrap it up in her mind and park it until she can deal with it. Now, I'm completely obsessive. If I have a problem, it absolutely floods the whole of my consciousness. I can't think of anything else but it. But Alexandra does not react in that way. It is, I think it's a rather unusual quality, and it has enabled her to keep going on so many different levels. Is she a competitive person? I don't think it's possible to do her job, really, without having a competitive spirit somewhere. But I'm, I'm incredibly proud of her because it, it just wasn't easy for her to begin with and she had to kind of convince herself that she could do it. Once she really felt that it was within her grasp, there was no stopping her really. Every time I see a copy of Bird, I think, well done, Alexandra. <laughs> I'm open my bucket and you pour water in here. Oh. So hang on, that's a mark. Oh, it's a water. That's what you Yeah, this is, this is a... So what's in there? It's a puff. It's like a sponge. November the 19th. I'm into my third month here. The other day I was talking to the beauty editor who had studied English at Cambridge University. She said to me, I hope you don't portray us as people who are just obsessed with blusher. I mean, we are obsessed with blusher, she said. It's just that we're interested in other things too. You buy like a pack of ten. Yeah. Now I feel like you're just buying a one hit. Do you remember what Depending on what you is? want. Alex says she likes to recruit clever women who are prepared to challenge her. But in all the meetings I've filmed, I haven't seen any of her team do that. I hope I do. What you can't do is you can't have it both ways. You know, you can't expect people to be your friends exactly and you can't expect people necessarily to like you that can't be your main consideration and that can then mean that you're a bit isolated because you're sort of you're not quite joining in in the same way um but but i i never feel lonely ever yeah I've got enough people around me that um, that I just don't ever feel lonely. What advice? I mean, we're very excited about fact that she's agreed to take part in the documentary. What advice, if any, would you give to the former such as Um, well, we don't bug her too much. Um, I think Kate pretty well does what she wants to do, and if, I don't think she's likely to, um, 
you know, you may, you have to see what you get. You may get Kate being chatty and charming and funny and warm and embracing, or, or you won't get her at all because she won't probably have you around. Some of the covers she's done where she's been almost a, a symbol rather than a person. I think that's what I've used her for a lot as a symbol. A symbol of fashion, Britishness, Vogue are the three, you know, sort of, yeah. It's not always about her as a person. There aren't many people who have that symbolic power, I think. I think it's supposed to be a bit sort of like house in the Mediterranean, gone a bit rock and roll. It's supposed to look like it's been lived in, there's been a party here. So we've got a lot of props. It's a it's a it's a, it's a, a legendary phantom ship, isn't it, of the stones? Exactly, they were in exile. Um, they owed too much tax in England, so they had to go to the south of France and were trying to invoke the same sort of mood. Very famous shoot of the stones. Um, yeah, and I think it's we're doing a really good job. Sorry, I can easily ask a bunch of questions. Yeah. Fine, I'll just... Is that a vintage piece? Yes, yeah, a vintage piece. My dad wore it in um, 19 something. I wasn't born, but um, it's too big. Can I just ask you one quick question, actually? Yeah. It's fantastic of you to let us have come in along to the shoot today, but um, obviously this is about British Vogue. How many covers have you done for them? Uh, 36, I think. 36 covers? Yeah, more than anyone else. Apparently. Apparently, I don't know. That's what they say. You know, that's a record that's unlikely to be broken, isn't it? Yeah. What, what, um, what would you say British, British Vogue has done, done for your career? Oh, they're everything. They've been such a huge support to me. Yeah. To me. I hate being in big. Sorry. <laughs> I'm like, ah! I don't like talking about this. <laughs> oh, yes, it is. Yeah. I'm not sure what to do now, really. I mean, do we just stay until someone says you've outstayed your welcome? I 
I always thought the currency of the fashion world was in the new. But Kate Moss's enduring success seems to be built more on extolling the virtues of the familiar. About 15 minutes after this, a woman came up to me and whispered in my ear, It's time for you to leave. Love that. Yeah, this is great. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, and that. Yeah, that's and really lovely. I was working on mocking up a few things, mm -hmm. so obviously, this is before reaching out to me. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. I have to say, I do think that kind of looks amazing. I'm not keen on that. I mean, if if you were gonna try a cloak one, it used to, I mean, her legs does not look great in this. This is kind of like way too much Union Jack. The other one would be better to try. Yeah, I yeah. just thought that was more had more movement to it. And... Well, it's not gonna get my vote. Okay. <laughs> um. Yeah, this looks kind of. Yeah, actually, I think this is going to work really well when we get this scrubbed up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is a risky cover, I guess, sometimes. I think you've been surprised when you've taken risks. Um, you know, and a lot of times we'll take a risk and we don't sell a lot of copies. So it's, there's a lot of pressure to sell magazines right now. And I think, um, you know, I think Alex feels confident the other, the other picture is gonna appeal more to our audience, so. I don't know. Personally, for me, I, if I saw that in the newsstands, I'd want to buy it more. I think it's more resting. I love the red and the blue and the white. And I think she looks really beautiful. Would you ever say to Alex that you felt passionate about this? I don't really feel passionate about this. Or do you, do you just accept her, 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 her initial response? No, I don't. I mean, I, you know, I, I am trying to push this through. To, to, to get to a stage where, you know, it is, um, where it could be considered in the running and, you know, I'm totally happy to voice my opinion with Alex. I think she's really, really appreciative of people voicing their opinions. Um, you know, ultimately, what she says goes, and I think sometimes if you push her too much, she gets annoyed, so I think it's better just to, you know, state your opinion and see what happens. It's, yeah, so it's Kate Moss and Vintage, basically. Um, no, I'm not going to do that one. That was definitely <laughs> You wouldn't sell a single issue you put that on the cover. Yeah. But it's going into research. Just as it, it doesn't read. We obviously need a, a cover line for this. Um, I don't actually want to make it look all Brit because we've got a whole British centenary thing happening. So I think we don't want to start with some too kind of jingoistic. I mean, we've got to spell out what, what well, it is she's I don't know, doing. do we? I don't think we have to say on it that she's wearing clothes from a exhibition. Not from an exhibition, but... No, but it's nicer that she's in that clothes. Yeah, but it's not just like yeah. someone else's version. Yeah. 
Robots and Thrones, Hit Last Closet Man. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to try that one. Yeah. You just keep rolling stones, Gavin Moss. Yeah. Oh, Moss. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, 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 yeah.
So it's Kate Moss in vintage stones clothes. Well, I'm feeling my spirits rise. I would put my cards on the table immediately. Good, like good. The further one on the left. I think it's the it's white. The, yes, I think it's. Um, I think it's the, uh, the images I prefer. Mm -hmm. I agree. Alex, mm -hmm. yourself. The one on the left. Stephen. I draw the one on the left. It's a very clear, clear paper. Richard, I imagine you, you're in seeing a 15 cent uplift. Yeah. Well, I'm instantly drawn to the one on the left, and I also have reservations about flags. We have a very, very long track record across all magazines of Union Jack covers doing incredibly bad. Why they should be, we know not why, but it is a fact. But in all of the ten examples, amongst the millennials, amongst all of the different groups in that research, they did not want the flag. Jamie? So weird. Well, I love the one on the, on the right. With My the whole office though. prefers, apart from me, prefers the one on the right. This everyone is so right. backing <laughs> up. <laughs> <Everyone's> <laughs> like, well, just so you all know, everybody yeah. come up to my desk and looked at that image and they're like, that's amazing. What a great <laughs> cover. Yeah. That one. And then they saw that one and they said, oh, that's kind of boring. It sort of looks like what <laughs> we've seen already. Same as the All of those girls I mean, off I don't, to I don't the right. Know. I think but they're wrong. Well, I also think it's a centenary year, and even though it's not the centenary issue, is it worth sort of making the most of like 100th anniversary of Vogue and sort of being a bit more British Vogue? Well, it's not us. I'm afraid I do. I don't mm. even like that picture. I don't like the really. I would make you a bet that the one on the left, which is a, a, a more classic image, would sell 10% more than the one. Well, on the we right. won't know because we're not going to. Yeah, right. do the no, on the right. And you and right. you wouldn't have any interest in doing like a double, like a double cover, and doing like subscribers get the sort of that fun. Is, but the press would be true then. No, 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 no. No, no right. but just out you of like well, for fun. Because yeah. a lot of people did like that. I guess. Mm -hmm. Not and in this room, but. Subscriber cover. We've never done a subscriber cover before. But you can. But you can. Um, no, I don't want to do it. I just don't like that picture. Then let's go with the next cover. Guy didn't think hard enough. Oh no! This one. <laughs> I think. Hi. <laughs> Wait. Can we can we film that reaction again? Wait. What? This is. Can I show you what happened? Look at the cover. <laughs> Everybody wanted my one. Two thousand and sixteen, the start of a new year, and there's a buzz in the office. Like an eighth of the most famous people in the world. Yeah, yeah. it literally is. Enjoy the appearance of the glamour of being associated with such famous people. Yeah, absolutely. It's part of the job. This year, British Vogue celebrates its 100th birthday, and the June edition will be its centenary issue. Over the next 12 months, a host of star-studded events have been lined up to celebrate this auspicious occasion. A huge exhibition at the National Portrait Gallery, a gala dinner. Alex is in a really good mood. So can you tell us what you learned about last week's developments? So last week's developments, um, our March cover sold brilliantly. Easy. Um, Campbell in the Gucci dress. 
Well, the first estimate says it's like 20 odd percent up year on year, which is, you know, very, very good. And so the next company of books coming up is Kate Moss. Uh, well, it was Kate Moss, and it's now Rihanna. She was pleased about that. I was pleased for her. I think she's generally really well behaved. Um, she doesn't behave badly. So I'm pleased when you know she gets to behave badly. Or, well, actually, it wasn't badly, but I'm pleased, you know, when that side of her comes out because she's so busy doing the right. She does the right thing. See, this has never happened before in your career. No, I never, never anything this uh, dramatic. I'm actually really shocked because I've never seen anything, you know, a disaster this huge. We were literally printing the Kate Moss cover. It was scheduled to print within a half an hour when we made the decisions. We had to stop that press and I had to deal with the production department to get everything swapped over the entire, all the pages that we designed for the inside to be swapped with the pages of the Kate Moss feature. And then they have to refolio the entire issue. That means putting in all new page numbers. And then we had, my department had to redesign the contents page, the editor's letter. Anything that had any remnants of the Kate Moss story, it had to be swapped over completely. So me and the production department had to work very hard on that and getting it done within 24 hours, basically. So you, you feel like you've got win, have you, that another magazine's done a, a front cover on? On Rihanna. On Rihanna, yeah. yeah. And they're coming out when? Well, I don't know their exact publication date, and I don't know any of the details of that. All I know is that we agreed that we would have Rihanna. Can you tell me which magazine it is? No. Which is the publication that's competing with it? Uh, I think it's Vogue in America. Um... I mean, it's, you know, I think the problem is, is that we don't want to be on this, the newsstands at the same time with the same cover star. Would it have impacted your sales, do you think? I don't think it would have been helpful to have two covers on the newsstand at the same time, of the same person, within the same market. So presumably the person... We, we weren't going to talk about you said we weren't going to talk about this anymore. Oh, right. No, but you did. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Alex was obviously a bit annoyed about it. Yeah. And I suppose, in a sense, it was quite a sort of combative move on her behalf to bring her edition earlier. Yeah, I suppose. Actually, um, I'm actually interviewing Anna Winter tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Do you think I should ask her that? She won't know about it. Won't she? No, I really wouldn't be so crazy. She doesn't know anything about this.